Hello and welcome to Singapore Budget Forum 2012. I'm Dom McLow. Well, the Singapore government has just unveiled its budget for the new fiscal year starting in April. And this is the first budget under the new government following last year's elections. And the focus is on building an inclusive society and a stronger Singapore. And this means upgrading and restructuring the economy so that growth can be sustained and better jobs created. And also giving a greater helping hand to those with lower incomes and helping the elderly live well. Well, there are further measures to reduce the flow of foreign workers and help for SMEs to to upgrade their operations. Well, at the individual level, there are also measures to help Singaporeans build up savings and make healthcare more affordable. And a new scheme to help offset the burden of the goods and services tax on low-income families. And to help us better understand the measures introduced in the budget, I'm joined in the studio by Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister Thaman Shamaguratnam. Minister, welcome. And for their reactions from different segments of society, I also have a panel of guests, and they include Lo Shu Ching, CEO of Rinse Hospital, Molia Hashim, CEO of Mandaki, a community self help group, Diana Chia, President of the National Trades Union Congress, Tio Xiong Seng, President of the Singapore Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Chong Hai Po, President, Food and Beverage Managers Association. Welcome to all of you. Now let's uh, get this uh, forum going by going around our panel and get your first reaction uh, to the budget speech this year. Uh, Su Ching, let's start with you. Well, my first response was, wow. I, I think this is a, these are very positive steps in the right direction. It shows the government really addressing the real needs of the aging society and the government really listening to the people on the mm -hmm. ground, recognizing the, uh, the needs of the elderly. Mm. Molia? Well, I thought there's a good apportionment for growth and the future, as well as strengthening our social fabric to become that inclusive society. And I think the self-help groups are quite happy to hear how we are strengthening the support systems um, to build our resilient families. And of course, the news that we're waiting for, how do we help the so-called sandwich class? Right. Diana, what about you? Well, I'm really happy that the government has uh, heeded to the union's call uh, to restore CPF for the older workers and I thought it was a good thing although it was uh, it is done partially but we are happy and we welcome that move mm, from the mm. government. Song Singh? Well it's a um, you know a very um, inclusive budget um, it, it is a budget for the long-term growth but for the businesses as, especially the SME uh, one can't help but feel that the concern on rising costs especially on the difficult external environment uh, maybe that wasn't uh, addressed enough. Mm -hmm. Hypo, what about you? Well, I think it's very encouraging because it's something that you build a fun foundations for the next uh, few years for Singapore to move on. Uh, but at the same time, I uh, could see that there's uh, some interesting, challenging factors that come along uh, with this budget as well. Mm. Minister, uh, let's uh, come to you. Uh, you must have had many priorities in your list, but what was the key and top priority for you in this year's budget? I think, um, well, first, I think it's a very good summary. <laughs> of, of uh, I think helping the elderly, doing more for the elderly, uh, both low income and middle income, uh, was a very important emphasis this year. And I would say not just for this year, but for the next few years. Second, uh, making this transition in our economy uh, from what I would call a medium productivity economy uh, with a medium level of wages to a high productivity and high wage economy is something that we want to address with some urgency. Mm. It's going to be very painful. Uh, it's going to involve restructuring in which not everyone will emerge a winner. Uh, and the government will provide very strong support, particularly for SMEs, to help as many of them survive and thrive. Mm. So part of the budget has a nice warm feeling about it, the elderly, the low income, and we want to do more. We have mm. to do more. Mm. There's but also another the part of the budget uh, has a bit of pain attached to it, the tightening of foreign worker measures. But with the pain will come a lot of added government support to help companies upgrade. Mm. Speaking of the elderly, there's this push to help uh, the elderly uh, find jobs and uh, help them uh, get jobs. Uh, from the SME's perspective, uh, would you hire more elderly workers? I think in this current tight uh, market situation, uh, definitely the, the business of SME would go all out to, to get the uh, workforce, again, whether it's local or foreign. So uh, we, we do support the government uh, 
push to hire older workers, and people are living more healthy, longer lives, and they're better educated. Mm. So I think this uh, special employment incentive does go some way to help mm. the, the company, and we, we, are, we are for it. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, um, I, I think it's important that the, 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 the message is productivity. That has to be driven, whether it's incentive or not. And again, this is, uh, this is as uh, DPM has said in the parliament, this will not only come from the employer-employee, but in fact have to come from everybody. Mm. So we, 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 we support it, and I think this is a, 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 a very good way to, to cushion the mm. impact of mm. hiring older workers. Hypo, would, would you yeah, end up I, considering I, I hiring totally older workers? I agree in that manner. I mean, the, quite a good focus is on the elderly. With the SEC, uh, they're giving in at 8% for 50 years uh, and above, and of course, uh, with those who earn with 3,000. Um, but also at the same time, the excitement will be this. The, you know, the, the, the senior, I will call, um, may not necessarily be going into very multitask. That may, may be probably would be chosen to say, I, I, I prefer not to be overstressed and just get, take a single task. So there, there will be an excitement over these areas. Mm. And of course, the selections of timing and all this. So it all have to see how the whole thing go to gel in to ensure the, the elderly can be settled in rather than to be say, yes, there is incentive, but if I can't handle multitask and we encourage productivities. So that at a certain point, uh, that can give a bit of a contradiction as well. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there's also such thing called productivity improvement with technology. Uh, I think, you know, uh, a lot of companies have not explored this area. And of course, you know, uh, Singapore going into it, uh, you know, in a very aggressive manner. I think there's a need, you know, for companies, SMEs and all that to go into this seriously and see how this uh, uh, mechanization can help the older workers? Uh, yes, I mean, I think uh, for the last few years, that's what we have been doing. But yeah. for some SME, either they, they are not aware of the schemes in, uh, available or they, are, they doesn't have the, uh, the, the willpower, and there's some of them. But I think great majority, they do want to, uh, they do want to uh, improve, but some of them are very pragmatic. They look at bottom line. So I think this, this uh, budget will further push them and what I like is the new uh, scheme on the uh, on the PIC, where actually you give the cash out front, and, and that also mm. now you recognise uh, training in house. Mm. So I think that will further uh, incentivise company to improve productivity. Mm. But on, on the other hand, I think the older workers uh, reemployment, I think also is a whole society image. Uh, in the, 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 because I ever hear, hear story where some older workers are not they don't want to come to work because they have the children think that they should, you know, take uh, it easy or uh, sometimes they, you look at... They should at, be retiring. Yeah, they should be uh, retiring right. or maybe they are simply not feel uh. So I think the whole, in, the whole image or that will have to be improved. Right. Let's move on to uh, the GST vouchers. Uh, I, I think a lot of people are uh, very welcoming uh, of this uh, GST voucher. Uh, from the community self-help group perspective, it must be welcome news. Oh, definitely. What the GST vouchers allow is the option that, that families with different kinds of needs, you know, uh, to make use of such assistance. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. So that uh, flexibility is very useful because no one family has the same kind of problems and no one formula can help, you know, all the families together. So this kind of options is important. Mm. Uh, Minister, what was the thinking behind uh, this permanent move? Well, um, basically, we want to make sure the tax system is fair. And that means that um, most of the taxes are paid by those who are better off, and most of the benefits are received by those who are less well off. But I think a fair system of tax also means that everyone has to pay something. Uh -huh. Everyone must pay something to making Singapore better, even if you're a poor person. You may get back a lot more than you pay, but still pay something. Uh -huh. And that's what the GSE is about. Everyone pays something, but some people will get back a lot more than what they pay. Most of our GSEs is contributed by the upper half of the population, and a lot of it, in fact, by foreigners. Mm. The poor contribute some of the GST, but in return, they're getting two things. Mm. First, they get permanent schemes that we had introduced at the same time that we raised the GST from 5 to 7%. Workfare is a very good example. Tops up wages of a very large group of Singaporeans increase medical subsidies, increase mm. education subsidies. Those are permanent continuing schemes. On top of that, what we wanted to do 
was to introduce a voucher that will also help them with their daily costs and their medical costs. Quite apart from topping up income through workfare, improving the subsidies, give them something in the form of a voucher. Uh -huh. For the first five years, we did it on a temporary basis. Now I'm doing it on a permanent basis. So people can see it with their own eyes and they get to understand the, the whole nature of the tax system, uh -huh. that this is actually a fair tax system. I'm getting something back if I'm poor. If I'm rich, you don't get anything back because your, your job is to pay some taxes for the betterment of society. Uh, uh. That's the basic logic. Now, before we go to where, I'm just wondering, with the GST voucher, the, uh, the increasing bus capacity and uh, enhancements uh, to the various schemes, how much is the government pumping into all these programs? Well, um, if you look at what we're doing for the elderly, the disabled, and the lower income group, over the next five years, the new initiatives that this budget contains will mean about uh, 5.5 billion dollars, over 5 billion dollars over the next five years. Uh, a good part of that is simply in healthcare. Uh, the increases in subsidies across the entire system, not just hospitals, but community hospitals, nursing homes, home-based care. But if you add everything up that we're doing for the elderly, the low-income group and the disabled, that's an extra 5 billion dollars over the next five years. On top of what would in, in, in any event have been a growing amount of expenditure, this is an extra. For the business community too, we are actually providing far more this year than the increase in foreign worker levies. So the pain is the foreign worker levy because we want to make sure that companies try to economize on use of foreign labor. Mm. But the plus that we are giving back is productivity incentives that Mr. Song Singh was talking about. And the incentive to hire Singaporean workers that Hypo was talking about. When you add it all up together, we're giving back more than we're taking from the companies. So that's our basic approach. Uh -huh. All right. We've got to go for a break right now. And uh, it's time for us to take a breather. And when we come back, we'll be taking a closer look at the issues linked with growing old. Stay with us. And you're watching Channel News Asia's continuing coverage of Singapore Budget 2012. Now, several measures have been introduced in this year's budget to help the growing population here in Singapore, one of which is the uh, silver housing bonus. But before we get to that, Minister, you were talking about the expenditure in this year's budget, but I was just wondering, what was the top line uh, figure in this year's budget for expenditure? Well, basically, the best way to think about expenditure is what percentage of our GDP is the government spending? And this year, we're spending close to 15% of GDP in all forms of expenditure, defence, education, healthcare, everything added. Our revenues are still a little more than that, mm -hmm. so that's why we're able to have a surplus. Mm -hmm. In two years, in five years' time, our expenditures are going to be significantly more. I would say roughly 2% of GDP more. In other words, instead of 15% of GDP, we'll be spending about 17% of GDP. That's a very sharp increase, and it's due to two things. First, transport. We're investing very heavily in the rail network, plus we're going to expand bus capacity. Secondly, healthcare. Building more hospitals, nursing homes, community hospitals, increasing the subsidies so it's more affordable for people. When you add it all up, it's a considerable investment, both for an inclusive society, as well as for economic growth, because without the infrastructure, you can't keep growing. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the uh, growing population, there must be a lot of priorities in terms of taking care of this segment of the population. What are the priorities uh, from a healthcare perspective? Suching? Well, actually, as, as Minister had mentioned, um, the first priority is making it affordable uh, because I think every elderly person's greatest concern is uh, medical cost. Uh, the, and because costs are so high these days, they worry about it because if, cost, if, if they fall ill, then they become a burden on their children. Um, and that no elderly person wants to do. Mm. Um, so keeping, it, uh, keeping the cost down um, and recognizing that health care for the elderly is about long-term care and it's about slow medicine, which means um, it's important to recognize that uh, in order, so to keep costs down, you must fund the long-term care sector and uh, move it Give your, move your funding in such a way that it's easier for the elderly uh, and 
they are more incentivized to move from the acute hospitals down to uh, the community hospitals and then down to uh, community care like home care. Mm. So uh, that is very key, uh, helping them to age at home. That means uh, you really need to give the caregivers a lot of support as mm. well, providing the caregivers uh, a network of support so that they don't feel alone because whenever caregivers feel very stressed, that's when they think maybe I can't take care of my loved one at home and maybe I have to send them to a nursing home for example. Um, so I think those are definitely the key priorities. Mm -hmm. Now one of the ways which uh, the government has tried to unlock the, the savings for the elderly is uh, the uh, silver housing bonus. Do you expect uh, retired couples to take advantage of uh, this scheme? I think it's it's a good option to have, um, but personally, I think it may you know it will the take up will, might be a little slow mm. because a lot of uh, older people are very attached to their homes. Um, it's very difficult to ask a seventy-year-old to say move because it, they will feel very stressed and tired <laughs> just thinking about the move. Mm. Uh, most people will see it as a good option if they well if they really needed to sell the house. Uh, you know, uh, to pay for the medical care, then at least they're able to. Um, so, but if they had a choice not to, uh, they, they'd rather not. Mm. I, I think um, we have to think about the mother tiered family because, you know, the owner of the house may be the father and the mother, but um, downgrading may have repercussions for the younger members of the family. So it may not be a, a very quick option for them. Mm -hmm. Minister, your reactions to. No, very good points. Um, this is not a scheme that is for every family, mm. but there's a very significant number of uh, retired couples who live on their own, mm. often near their children, mm. near their grandkids, but they live on their own and they like living on their own. But, sir, a, but sir, normally mm. they're not the low income. Uh, no, I'd say if you go to Perhaps. three room flats, if they you do? go to our studio apartments are essentially uh, retiree couples, mm. and if you go to the three room flats, very often you'll find that the son or daughter who was previously there is mm -hmm. now married and through BTO is living somewhere else, right? right? So that is an emerging trend in Singapore. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you look, for instance, at our lower income uh, groups, you notice that uh, household size is getting smaller. Mm -hmm. okay. And a large part of it is the fact that children are getting older, getting mm -hmm. married and moving out, mm -hmm. hopefully still staying in contact with the parents. So the parents are now sitting on an asset which has very high value. So our real challenge in Singapore is this. Housing is a key pillar of our social security system, not just the CPF. You took money out of this house, the CPF to put it into the house. Housing is a form of savings. During your working years, the house value goes up as long as economic growth is good. And people have accumulated a lot of wealth. So now how do you help people to decumulate mm -hmm. in their retired years? It doesn't make sense to just keep sitting on that sure. pile of wealth. Mm -hmm. How do you get money out of the house? Mm. And there are many different ways. Some mm. people rent out a room. Some people mm. wouldn't mind giving, giving back part of the lease to the government, which is why we've enhanced the lease buyback scheme. But many people don't mind downgrading. If it is a nice place to downgrade, and if it is not too far from their children. And our studio apartments, frankly, are beautiful. Mm. They're, they're very well made, very well designed, very elderly friendly and you have activities in the neighbourhood and a senior activity centre to help take care of you. Mm. So it's an option that's, I think, quite attractive. It'll take time for more and more people to want to do this, but it's for people to choose. Mm. Mm. Diana, I'm just wondering from the uh, workforce point of view, uh, what are the concerns of the workforce when uh, some of this, uh, these uh, uh, workforce uh, uh, workers, when they approach the retirement age, uh, what are their immediate concerns when they think, well, do I have enough money for retirement? Of course, you know, that's the main concern and I think healthcare is another bigger concern. Mm. Most Singaporeans have got a house so they don't have to worry so much about a roof over their head, you know. But healthcare is the other, the other concern as you're getting older. And of course, uh, having a decent job for them is the other concern that they have. Uh, you know, so, so having decent pay for a decent job is something that will help them through their old age. So with this uh, budget itself, it seems to address, you know, quite a few things. And, you know, I thought that using the home uh, as another assurance or insurance, you know, for older age is an alternative choice that you can choose. 
and the CPF itself helps them to build up their funds. Um, and the assistance you know, that they get from hospitalisation uh, does help the workers. Mm. Uh, it relieves, the, I would say, the sandwich uh, class because you know, they are always having a problem with uh, children's education and then the elderly uh, or the parents' uh, medical needs. So with this, I think it has helped. Uh, it will help them a little bit. Mm. You know, but some to, so sorry. I, I actually agree with that, but the, the, there's one portion they're not to neglect, and that portion is actually the, the lower income uh, elderly. Because bear in mind, if, if you see housing in today, a lot of them go for renting. It's not like in the olden days, where you know my parents' time, they, they actually know uh, they can own a flat, and that is a security for them. So, but today, there is many uh, low-income group of people who perhaps earn less than 1,007, mm -hmm. which is quite a reasonable mm -hmm. percentage mm -hmm. in Singapore population. And they are the ones who actually suffer apart from just a able ability to earn, to, to own the house, but they're actually renting the house. It becomes an expense. Mm -hmm. And on the contrary, at the same time, worry about children, worry about the uh, living, worry about medical mm. and of course getting a suitable job to sustain that living i think that that is a portion that is something that i think uh, not to miss out well, from what you've just described would that give them incentive to come back to the workforce then to find jobs it is part of good incentive as mentioned earlier on that will encourage them to return look at that changi airport we have quite a lot of uh, senior people you know mm. is doing guest services job as well we have people who works in the service industry doing as a culinary very focused task um, they enjoy it they will need that job but important thing is as mentioned earlier is how far they were able to focus at one task or two tasks or three tasks mm. but at the end of the day is it go back but again if you go back to service industry and even hospitality industry the salary is, is, is not the, the most flamboyant one in the markets. So is that sufficient for them? Mm. You know, um, and is, is it the right time for yeah. us to say a certain industry mm. that we want to really attract them, maybe the entry level, we need to pay more, mm. not only just mm. for... Yeah, ha having yeah. said that, it's not just about you know, them not being able to multitask. Yeah. I mean, we always talk about training them and upgrading themselves, etc. But sometimes it's just about their mental condition, their mental health, mm. you exactly. know, the depression that they are yes. in. So training does no good for that, you know. Yeah. So yeah. the idea that they're alone, the idea that they're not supported, or the idea that they're not with a family and having, you know, um, uh, live in a, a rented apartment and, and with no assets, I think that affects their mental health a great deal. So no amount of training, no amount of restructuring of the industry uh, would, would help these people. So there must be some other but, ways, uh, you know, In fact, just now in the, in the parliament speech, uh, EPM uh, use a word which I always emphasize is a dignity. Mm. Because in, I think sometimes people who try to encourage Singaporeans to come out to work, whether it's homemakers or older generation, it is you must treat the job with dignity, yes. with respect. Mm -hmm. And that maybe is another round we need to educate you know, our consumers, mm -hmm. uh, employers, employees. Employers to treat the staff well. Similarly, the mm -hmm. staff should respect the job. So I think sometimes it's a certain uh, job may, may not carry the right image. Mm. So I think it is important. And, and back to this silver housing, it, it is a very caring project. Because I think rather than looking at downgrading, it's actually to, to choose a more suitable, because maybe the flat was too big for oh. them. All right. so, so I think there are all sorts of schemes, but really it's, maybe it's a whole, whole, uh, whole population, mm. how we look at you know, people working and all that. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. respect. Right, hold, hold your thoughts. We've got to go for a commercial break right now. It is time for us to go for a quick break, but when we come back, we'll be discussing <laughs> the issue of jobs. Right Stay with us. <laughs> And welcome back to Singapore Budget 2012 Forum. Uh, just before the break, Su Ching, you were trying to make a point about the elderly in the workforce. Um, yes. In fact, um, I, I wanted to make sure that we didn't, that people didn't get away thinking that the only reason why we want the elderly to, to be well is so that they can, be, they can work. You know, and we shouldn't define people by just you know, whether how productive they are. Mm. Because I think that was one of the issues we had about 
whether how caring a society is. So really, when we talk about a sense of purpose for the elderly, uh, it could just be, you know, aging actively, doing other things apart from working, you know, being uh, contributing to the society in other ways rather than just uh, making money or, or, or making sure that, you know, our businesses uh, get going uh, and have, have workforce. Yeah. So, so it's, it's very important that, that we remember this, that you can age gracefully and age with dignity, even by just taking care of your grandchildren, yeah. you know, and being and, part and, of that. And this is where I thought that, um, you know, while we need to enhance the SMEs and while we need to look at the CPF contribution and so that the, the elderly can come back to work productively or, or attracted to come back to work, we need to balance it with uh, what kind of um, uh, social, what the, can the social sector do in order to enrich the lives of the elderly. Mm -hmm. So provisions, not only for productivity, but provisions for active ageing. You know, happy living, uh, and that is my concern within the social sector. We're talking about people who are able to do this, you know, and do this well. Is that something to consider for the next budget, perhaps? <laughs> it's, it's actually very much part of our plan. Some of it is, in fact, in this budget, and um, some of it will come in the next few years. But I think the point being made is a very important one. Um, uh, on, on both sides, by the way. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you take up on what uh, Xiong Seng said, if you respect the worker, uh, the worker will respect the job. Yeah. Uh, that's one point. Mm. Uh, second point, if you want people to feel happy about themselves and to you know, be, have a, the right mental balance and a positive attitude towards life, they've got to stay active. Mm. It doesn't happen usually if you just stay at home. It, it involves some form of activity, not because you're trying to add to national productivity, but you want to stay active. But there's a way in which, when people are respected and people enjoy themselves, there's a way in which they end up being more productive. It's in the nature of human behavior. Mm -hmm. If you're respected, if you enjoy yes, what you're doing, yes. you tend to become more productive. And I think that we'll be surprised by how productive our elderly Singaporeans can be, and even how much they can multitask. In fact, they are in a way. And you, have have you know, you just have to go to Japan, mm. walk into yes. a small restaurant, especially outside of Tokyo, where they don't have so many young people and the old people run everything. And you're just amazed at the productivity. I once was in a restaurant where there was an elderly woman, I was with my wife and at least a couple of our kids. She was slightly bent. And I only realized halfway through the evening that the restaurant had only one person working in it. <laughs> and she did, she was the waitress, she was the cook, she was the cashier, she did everything. Mm. And she had a television there to entertain us because there's no one else around. <laughs> right? Amazing. But they do that as a matter of yes. course. It's multitasking, it's self-respect, and I think she was enjoying herself. <laughs> well, still on the subject uh, of jobs, um, earlier in your speech you mentioned how uh, there needs to be increased uh, number of beds in the uh, hospital sector. I'm just wondering, Su Ching, with more hospital beds, uh, won't there be a need for more doctors and nurses to, you know, uh, help look after patients? Definitely. Um, and in fact, even as I was listening to um, the announcements about uh, increasing the number of acute hospital beds and 1,800 community hospital beds, uh, my first reaction was, uh, but where are you going to find, where are we going to find the people uh, to, you know, beds, infrastructure is, is the easiest part. Uh, but training the people and getting the people to actually uh, run, uh, look after the patients and, and run the hospital, that's a challenge which we are already facing currently. Um, and that's why, you know, the heavy reliance on uh, foreign talent. This is, I think, similar to the hospitality industry. I mean, tr tourism, hotel, F&B. Um, at the end of the day, I think every organization would love to take Singaporean, but it's to a point there are, there are no, not many of them willing to step forward uh, in, into the industries. So, of course, um, in, I don't think any of the organizers would like to pay uh, a higher levy or higher S pass, just in view for the fact it is true enough because the, the demand are there, you know, the, the guests are there. Uh, can we afford to have an unhappy guest or can we afford to have uh, nobody to look after the, the, the patient? Mm. So I think that that is something very exciting and challenging, which I mentioned earlier. Why? Because I think we, we totally fully support, I think, in a way that we should not depend a lot of foreign labour. But at the same time, um, 
apart from getting the 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 the, uh, the senior generations to able to be part of the workforce, um, there is a three more plan to actually look at. It's actually how can we encourage now the young generation to say that this is an area that can have a career development, and the current workforce how to keep them and say this this is indeed a place that you will enjoy as. Uh, you mentioned earlier on that you know a happy place, happy guest, or happy patient. Yeah, but at the same time, we also not to miss out. We have a lot of Singaporeans who are overseas, who actually do extremely well in the F&B scene, in the hospitality scene, um, and they are all is is a way. I mean, they they are another force to can bring them in back and say start close up the gap first, do a bridging, and so that we don't the hospitality industry or F&B do not face the excitement of, yes, we are reducing 5% now from the levy, but at the same time, who you want us to serve? You end up is the PMEX, the majors who are doing more jobs, and they end up and say, okay, perhaps I'm going to give up because I really got nobody. So I think, um, the, the, I think the ideas are there, but important is the execution level is such an uh, important factor mm. that you have to take one step in order to bridge what had been laid off for the last few years and now how to bridge it while we still need to have a reasonable uh, foreign workforce which we have to face it, There's, there is a fact. Mm. But at the same time, how can we help the, the, the companies to also at the same time uh, bring in the necessary Singaporeans who really want to work in this area. In fact, uh, I think beside the hospital base additional is the 800 buses who are going to drive them. <laughs> but but, but I, I think uh, as uh, DPM said, they, I, I still think there are ways to engage mm. additional workforce, mm. like for example, some of the housemakers. Mm. In fact, in the chambers, China chambers, we are talking that when you pay the overtime, maybe you should pay higher overtime or higher hourly rate during lunch and dinner so that you attract them to come. You know, and so that you don't pay the same rate. So mm -hmm. still, I think there are ways we can be more creative. But, but one example we are, we are suggesting is that if you ask, ask a housemaker to come out to work in a restaurant, lunch or dinner, maybe they just don't want to get CPF. They just want to have lump sum. Mm -hmm. So maybe MOM can look at some way to simplify the process. So I, I think we, we, we shouldn't put the, the cut in front of the horses. Mm -hmm. I think, this, I think the, the vision of building more hospital-based transport system is right. We just have to work towards improving productivity and get the people to drive the buses and man the hospital. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and in this regard, I thought that, you know, with a, with a tight labour market, the 5% drop in the foreign workers can, can be met with a lot more of our women to go to work. Mm -hmm. That's why I was very, very particularly, I was particularly happy with the announcements of the enhancements in, in grants and subsidies uh, for childcare and, and student care and, and as such. Mm -hmm. Because there's a huge potential that we could get some women to go back to work. Mm. And I'm also glad that, you know, the fact that you all mentioned about the housewives and we have, mm -hmm. you know, yes. that we can tap on. Yes. And I think we should also explore a little bit more on flexible work arrangements for yes. housewives, mm. you know, so that we can welcome them back and, as you say, you know, pay them a certain rate, you know, when the... Higher rate. Yeah. Higher rate, mm. you know, for, for, for to welcome them at a certain level. So I think, you know, we, we really need to look at all these resources that we have, you know, with this this uh, reduction in foreign workers and we really have to mix and match and see how we can actually blend all these you know, arrangements yes. together and see how we can support. It's a system that has to support this yeah. too. You know, to and when we probably need to, to reframe, you know, it mm -hmm. need not be a particular industry or we not uh, be a particular occupation that must be foreigners or, or, yeah. lo or, or, or yeah. locals, you know. I mean, we think about so the Singapore's aspirations, correct. the new Singaporean aspiration. Uh, perhaps, you know, rotational shift is not something which they want, even when you talk about the rank and file. Uh, perhaps overtime is not something they want because they want to spend more time, quality mm. time with the children because the children need to go through school and get the PSLE score right. So mm. perhaps if we could reframe and relook, uh, there's a combination of a foreign labour component to the same mm. job. You know, that will allow our Singaporean to be attracted, attracted to be in the same job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think Molia is, is right. Uh, because there will be some jobs where inevitably, because Singaporeans are now, you know, used to a higher standard of living, uh, they will just not find attractive. In, in healthcare, and especially in the long-term care sector, um, 
it's it's very challenging to ask people to work shifts. So nurses, for example, you know, extremely difficult because who wants to work nights when you can work a five day week? But in, in, in the hospitals, you have to work seven days a week. What, what will attract them then? Well, partly if you uh, improve the image of the, of the vocation, of the profession, uh, it might help to attract more people there. Uh, pay always helps, you know, no matter, even though we say, you know, you shouldn't go in for pay. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, in, it is a noble profession, but it must be a viable career option as well. Uh, when you offer this to, when you want people to be nursing aides and, and therapy aides, and mm. so you must be able to pay them and show them that you, there is a way to move up the ladder. But Haipong, you I should, uh, I should support think? that. My only take is this. Uh, sorry, I'm not negative on that. Mm. I'm just only take is this. Encourage housewife, flexi hours. I think many years ago, when, when we talk about going about productivities, all this have been implemented as well. Look at banking, having uh, industry. They do have flexi hours to attract the housewife, attract people who are not in workforce to work for four hours and five hours. But today, it, it's, they're still facing the, the labor's uh, challenges. But I, I think besides flexi hours, like in my company now, I actually, because of IT, actually some of them are encouraged to work from home. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know, so, so, yeah. so, yeah. Right. it's a matter of, uh, again, I think you really have to think out of the mm. box. Right. Because the direction is there to improve productivity. We have to reduce our dependency on foreign workers. So everybody has to work together. So there are ways, you know, to, 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 to mm. think, maybe we are in a different industry. Right. But the other on, right. on the workers... I, I wish yeah. we had more time to yeah. uh, <laughs> go on, but we do really have to take a quick break right, right now. And uh, when we come back uh, after the break, we'll look towards the future. The foundation has already been laid in this budget, but how can we build upon it? We'll be back. Welcome back. You're watching Channel News Asia and this is the last segment of our special forum on Budget 2012. And in this segment, we're looking into the future. Uh, Minister, you said in your speech that uh, it's a challenging target to achieve productivity growth of 2 uh, to 3% for the next 10 years. Is that really a realistic goal? Yeah. Well, it's challenging first because if you look around the world, very few countries that are at our level of development or higher are able to sustain such a high growth rate of productivity over a full 10 years. You can do it for one or two years, but not the full 10 years. But I would say we've got to look at it in the perspective of what's happened in the past. In the 1970s and 1980s, about half our economic growth came from productivity improvements and another half simply because our labour force was getting bigger. More employment the other, and more productivity, half-half. In the, and in the 1990s as well. In the last decade, productivity was weaker. It contributed only one third of our economic growth. So now we have to catch up because our labor force is getting tighter. Foreign workers, we can't keep growing in. So productivity will have to be the main driver of economic growth. And I would say two thirds of our economic growth in this 10 years has to come from productivity compared to one-third in the last decade mm. and compared to 50% in the previous decades. Mm. So it's quite challenging because it's higher than anything we've achieved before. But there is no alternative because we can't keep growing our labour force. The local labour force is already growing very slowly. Foreign workers, we're reaching our limits. Mm. So there is no alternative. If we don't achieve productivity increases, not only will our GDP growth slow down, but wage growth will slow down. And we cannot build an inclusive society if we do not have a decent increase in wages year by year, five years by five years, and over 10 years, a very significant improvement in the real standard of living of ordinary Singaporeans. Speaking of productivity, how is it measured, for example, in the healthcare sector? I mean, is that possible to measure productivity? Actually, in healthcare, well, first of all, we're, we're a high-touch uh, industry, um, so you cannot, never, you cannot do away with people. Uh, for caring. Uh, but having said that, um, we are constantly looking for ways to to improve. Just because we are so lean, we, we don't have enough uh, manpower, we have to look for new ways and different ways to uh, reduce waste uh, and, and in that sense uh, increase productivity. We're always looking at how we can improve processes, um, looking at new innovations and ways to do things. For example, when there are not enough beds 
you know, what do you do? You look at how then you can move some of your uh, services to the outpatient. Um, you look at how uh, you know people can multitask uh, because we have to. Uh, again, not enough people. Yeah. So certainly, um, I, I'm not sure if we have a productivity measure, but we are certainly always looking for ways to be more productive because just because we have to. I think my, my, I think fully support. That is the way to measure down the road for the next five years to ten years. Um, the only thing is. I think for each different industry, what they need to do is really to set um, the model so that within the industry, there is an apple-to-apple -apple comparison and the best practices to roll out. Because productivity is a very big word. And what, to, what is productive and what is not productive, sometimes each individual organization spell out differently. Um, so, as, as I mentioned, in order to synchronize it, especially in the people industry, uh, I think there must be create a few models. Somebody need to come out and take the lead with a few ministry and say this is what we can do as a model, roll up to a few places and then this model can change along the way to improve it and then this model can be used to set there is a benchmarking because productivity in each industry require a certain benchmarking. Then you can compare that. Yes, then we can say it is, it is contributing in value added as a, uh, a national productivity level. Mm. Mm. Uh, is it an achievable target, 2 to 3 percent uh, productivity growth? Um, it's possible, but again, I think it also depends on external environment. So I, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's what TPM said is that we have to work towards it. Otherwise, we will not continue to have in, uh, increase in the salary as such for the lower, lower pay. Mm. So I, I think it's, it's achievable. But I think of all these talking about the future, uh, government is a very thorough, thorough budget, you know, the businessmen work very hard. But I think the Singaporean also must have a sense of sacrifice. And recently, you know, we read reports about void decks, the usage and uh, certain open area being, you know, having dispute. So I, I think one can't help to say that, to think that, you know, uh, while we become a, a materialistically richer society, people may have the less sacrifice spirit mm. compared to our, our, our parents. Mm. So I think while, while we progress, I think this um, uh, sacrifice uh, for the community, I think that must be emphasized. Mm. Diana, what about you? What, what are your thoughts on uh, improving productivity? I think with the current budget and support that is given to industries, uh, in terms of training of, of uh, employees itself, you know, you are making it easier. Uh, with in-house training and you know so it provides more opportunity for training um, I think it is uh, something that's doable but we need to control the inflation you know I think that's important in, in uh, the 3% the increase in productivity mm -hmm. and growth Mm. Well, we're almost uh, to the end of uh, this uh, forum discussion, but before I do that, I'd like to go around uh, our panel uh, once again to have your final thoughts. Uh, maybe we can uh, start with uh, Su Ching, uh, your final thoughts? Um, I have two final thoughts, sure, maybe they're ahead. more like wishes. Um, the first is that, you know, that ultimately the long-term care sector uh, will, will, and, and the non-profit sector will be, again, the image of, of these sectors will, will raise, be raised. And, you know, again, I, I think Minister in your budget is trying to help us do that. Uh, so that, you know, in the end it will be like work, working in that, this sector could be like working in banking or, or aviation. But in the second, and the second point I want to make is uh, that we need to, as we move forward in the future, we need to uh, do away with this uh, medical social divide. There needs to be more interagency coordination. Uh, otherwise, um, when uh, somebody with disabilities uh, grows old, uh, the medical sector may not know how to take care of them and vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, I started off by saying that there's a good apportionment of what grows into growth. And, uh, and then into the, the social spending. I think we, we really have to seriously think about investing in the social sector. I mean, there's no good uh, about increasing productivity, but the quality of life, you know, uh, does not grow in tandem. Uh, so investing in the social uh, service professionals, I think, is, is, should be a top priority. The other one is that I'm happy to hear the, uh, the top up with the ComCare, um, which, you know, every Singaporean can enjoy. But the $5 million top up for the self-help groups would allow the self-help groups to identify gaps peculiar to the community, right? Well, we have all the national initiatives, but we can then use that top up to look at not only meeting the needs, but 
the aspirations of each community. Mm -hmm. Diana? Well, I think, you know, it's a very inclusive and wholesome, you know, budget itself to help many Singaporeans. It's, it's helping hands, you know, to many Singaporeans. And, uh, you know, and there will be some pain as mentioned by the PM. Uh, I think what's important is we are not sure moving forward, you know, what's the economic uh, climate going to be. And I think when, when the time comes, there will be more uh, support that's needed, you know, in, in if uh, there's an economic downturn. And that's the assurance that I think, you know, we should have. Mm. Mm. Do you think? Well, um, I think this budget is good in a way. It also look into the middle income. Uh, two points to get it, that's good. Um, on, on, the, on the workers' uh, ratio reduction for workers, we can understand that, but we hope that when it comes to implementation, in case the foreign, the external environment change drastically, mm -hmm. I hope the government can be more flexible. And second thing is that for some SME, they may employ just one or two foreign workers. So when the ratio go down from 65 to 60 percent for, let's say, manufacturing, so you, you can't just divide them, become 1.7 workers. So I hope they can round off to the higher numbers to help the SME. <laughs> so it's a fantastic budget. Again, I say that, you know, um, last year when, when we did the same program, DPM said that it is a very exciting time. Uh, this year, I think we are really, you know, on, on the way to, 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 uh, to, to reach our goal. And I think all Singaporeans have to work together, not just the employer or the government, the employees and, and the whole mm. nation. Mm. Um, Haipo, very quickly. Yes, it's, uh, I would call it a good people budget. Yeah, a budget where you're going to ensure people is employable uh, via through with uh, trainings and the skill set. But more importantly is that the deliveries itself must be very distinct and precise. Mm. All right, Minister, uh, you, you have the final word. Your key message to Singaporeans on this budget. Well, I think um, let's think of ourselves 10 years from now. What sort of society we, we would like to be? Mm. Uh, first, of course, I think we want ordinary working people to have a better standard of living, higher incomes. Second, uh, we want our enterprises uh, to still be there, especially our small enterprises, competitive, surviving and vibrant. Uh, third, we want to make sure that it is a Singapore where everyone is interested in each other and interested in each other's welfare. It has to be a compassionate society. And I think to get there, high incomes, enterprises flourishing, and a compassionate society. Uh, we need to place a lot more emphasis, firstly, on training every worker. And that's a responsibility of the enterprise, and the government will play its full share. So much so that actually for SMEs, under our new schemes, the government pays for virtually 100% of the cost of training. Mm. Second, it involves what was discussed earlier, which is that we've got to respect the worker and respect every, respect every job. Every job is worth doing. And if you go to the most developed societies, you'll find that mm. blue-collar jobs are highly esteemed jobs. Mm. Mm. But thirdly, as Chiu Xiong Seng says, we have to have a sense of responsibility for ourselves as well. Mm. You've got to work hard, not just because you're waiting for your pay, right. but because you want to do the best job possible. All right. You want to do the best job possible. And I think that's a spirit which uh, we've got to maintain. In some respects, we've got to recover from okay. the past. And it'll hold us well. All right. Thank you so much, Minister. Thank you for joining us tonight. And thank you to all our panel for joining us thank tonight. You. And that's it for uh, Singapore Budget Forum 2012. We'll see you next time. Good night.